In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this awesome 2D card drifting game inside of Unity. So yeah, let's get started. So here we have this complete gameplay Unity project and I have set the screen resolution to 1080 by 1920 so it's in the portrait mode. And also I have changed the background color of the camera to gray as you can see here so you can change the color to whatever you like. And here I have got these sprites that we will use for this project. A car in a straight road and this turn here. So firstly we need to make a track for our car. So let's drag and drop this inside of the hierarchy. And we need to give it a collider first. So let's add an edge collider and set the position here. So let's set this somewhere around here. Alright so yeah this looks good. Now let's make another copy of this so that we can put it on the other side. Change the offset here. Alright so we have the colliders in place. Let's make it a prefab and delete this from the scene. And we will do the same for the other one here. So you can be as accurate as you want to. Alright now we are almost ready to make our track. Let's delete this and now we are ready to make our own track. So let's pull this inside of the hierarchy and I'll just quickly make a track for the game. And once we are done, we will make another game, empty game object and place them all inside of this game object here called environment. Alright, so everything looks much more cleaner. So now we are done with the trick and it's time for us to add our car. So let's drag and drop this car inside the hierarchy, add a polygon glider to it. Alright, this looks good. And now let's add a rigid body 2D. Make sure you set the gravity scale to zero here. And now we are ready to make our car movement script. So let's call this car movement. Create an ad and we will open this up inside of Visual Studio. Alright, so firstly we need to make a few variables first. Public float for the max speed, another float for the acceleration and another one for the steering. And lastly we need to get the rigid body 2D for our car so let's make a private rigid body 2D. If I just call it RB. Here we inside of the start method we will get the rigid body 2D component from our car. So RB is equal to get component rigid body 2D. Alright, and now inside of the update method we need to get the input first. So let's make a float for the actually let's just make a float up here one for the horizontal input and the other one for the vertical so float x and for the y here we will set this to one because we want the car to keep moving we can get rid of this and here we can calculate the speed which will be equal to the which will be equal to the transform dot up multiplied by the multiplied by the vertical input multiplied by the acceleration alright and now we can just add some force to it and now we can calculate the direction here float direction and we will set this equal to the dot product of the 
rigid body's velocity and the and the relative vector which will be in the direction vector 2 dot up all right now that we have the direction we can check if the car is moving so we will check if acceleration is greater than zero then we will check if the direction is greater than zero and well if it is then we will set the then we will set the rotation of the rigid body minus equals to the horizontal input multiplied by the steering and we will multiply it with the rigid body's velocity divided by the max speed and let's put an else here so if it is great if it is less than zero we'll just copy this tested here and instead of minus we will put in a plus, plus here so when it is less than zero we will do the opposite all right and now we can calculate the drift force so here we will make a float for the drift force which will be equal to the dot product so vector 2 dot dot so the dot product of the rigid body's velocity and the rigid body's relative vector that would be the that would be either the left or the right side of the car so we will put in vector 2 dot left and we will multiply it with some value here so i'll just hard code this and put in 2 and you can change this whenever you want and then we need to calculate the relative force here so that would be equal to the vector 2 dot right multiplied by the drift force cool and now the only thing left here is to apply this relative force so we'll type in rigid body dot add force and we will get the rb dot uh, relative vector and put in the relative force here all right and lastly we need to check if the velocity is greater than the max speed so rb dot velocity dot magnitude if it is greater than the max speed and if it is then we will set the rigid body dot velocity to the normalized vector of the velocity multiplied by the max speed Cool, so that's all we need to do here. In order to visualize this, we can just type in debug.drawline from the rigid body z position to the point of the relative force here and set the color to green. Also, I forgot to add this. Also, I forgot to get the horizontal input here. So I'll type in x is equal to input.get axis. And we'll type in horizontal here. All right, so that's all we need to do. Let's head back inside of Unity. Set the max speed to I think 10, the acceleration to 7, and the steering to 2. You can play around with all these values here. So let's try this out now. And as you can see, it already looks pretty cool. But the camera doesn't move with the with our car. So we need to make a camera follow script for our camera. So let's select the camera and let's make a new script here. Call it camera follow. Let's open this up. And here we can get rid of the start method because we won't be needing it. Let's make a public transform target and a vector 2 for the offset. And a public float for the smoothness how smooth we want the camera to follow our player all right and here inside of the update method we will get the delayed position which will be equal to vector 3.lerp 
between the position of our camera to the position of our target so transform dot position and the target dot position and here we need to give it a time so let's put in smoothness here and finally we will apply this delete position to our transform dot position plus the offset here alright that's all we need to do so let's put in the values here for the z we will put this to minus 10 and for the smoothness let's put in 0.125 and drag and drop our target let's try this out and it's kind of a little shaky here it's because we need to change the update to fixed update here all right let's go back try this out again And here it looks much more smoother now. Awesome. Except the camera angle doesn't change accordingly according to our car here. So for that we need so let's go back. And here we need to set up the triggers around the scene. So whenever our car collides with the trigger, we will change the camera's rotation. So let's create an empty game object here. Alright, let's name this tri game trigger. Reset the position and add a box slider 2D to it. And let's scale this up a bit so it covers the whole road. And now let's position each of them correctly. One here, 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 and here. And now we need to make another script here to manage the camera's rotation. So let's call this camera control. Create an add and let's open this up. I'm not gonna go through the detail here but you can just stop this video and copy all this code or you can just get the complete project with all the assets from my patreon account I'll put a link to it in the description Alright, so once we done that, we will set the size here according to our triggers. So I have 4 triggers and I have set the size to 4. And for each of them, we will insert the camera Z rotation for when, the, for when it enters any of the trigger respectively, as I have done here. So alright, let's test this out, see if it works. Awesome, so now the camera follows our car correctly. Cool. So now we just need to add the trail effect to end this up. For that, let's make an empty game object inside of the camera. We will call this trail and add a trail renderer to it. For the width, I'll put in 0.2 and for the time here, I'll put in 0.3. The color, you can just set it to whatever you want. I'll just go with this one here. Set the material to default line, shadows off and place them at the tires position, set the order in layer to 1, let's duplicate this and place it here. Alright now we can test this out and here we go, it looks much more better. And of course you can play around with everything to fit your own needs. So yeah that's it for this video. If you have any questions leave them down in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my youtube channel now. And until next time, see ya.